Hi, I'm just going to take a minute and introduce myself. My name is Amy from Amaruni Designs. And I know that is a little um, tricky to say. It comes from my nickname when I was growing up. My grandma used to call me Amaruni Bambooni. And so when I was trying to come up with a name for my blog, I was like, oh, I'll do something unique and also impossible to spell and say. <laughs> So Amaruni Designs is my blog name. I have been sewing and blogging for about a dozen years or so. Um, it started, well, I've been sewing longer than that. When my daughter was just little, uh, my mother-in-law found me a sewing machine at a yard sale and a big bag of like satin costume fabric. And we were super poor. <laughs> so for Christmas, my friend and I took all of these, this costume satin yardage stuff and we made little elastic waist skirts and things like that for our girls for Christmas um, and that was when I first started sewing and it's gone around and evolved and now I create sewing patterns and um, embroidery I like to do felt applique and all different kinds of things so I live in southwest Wyoming it's super cold right now. Um, luckily it's warming up, but it's been real cold. And I would love if you wanna share in the comments where you're from. Um, I'm super excited to have you here. As a quick little reminder, um, don't click on any links that might show up in the chat unless they are from Husqvarna. Uh, we're trying, we will stay on top of the trolls, try to keep all of the spam links out, but don't, um, we won't ask for any personal information, so please don't click on any links unless they are official links from our Facebook page, the Husqvarna page. Um, I have been so lucky to get to sew with my Opal 690Q for the last year as a sewing ambassador for Husqvarna Viking, and it has been so much fun. I love my machine, um, and I love all the things that we can do. And so today I am going to walk you through um, making this quilt as you go background. Um, I'm going to show this version, which is a Valentine version, using applique from my um, pattern called the Bring the Love um, mug rug pattern. It's in my Etsy shop, and you can find the link for that up in the show description. Um, and so it includes the applique for these hearts and also um, for the word love. And this is a secondary project that comes with the pattern when you buy it um, to make these fun, cute, easy placemats. So um, this is what we're gonna be working on today, but you can use this um, quilt as you go technique. You can make coasters, um, you can make zipper pouches, you can do all kinds of things with it. It's one of my favorite things to do because you can use the little tiny scraps of fabric and make a bigger piece of fabric basically. Um, and then you end up with this fun quilted background. So I'm just gonna show you a couple other versions. These are just hearts I um, just kind of freehand cut. And so we'll walk, walk you through that later in the show. And um, here's another version here, turn it toward the camera. Um, and I love the light background with the pink on here. Um, and then the other version is this cute little rainbow is a free applique pattern that's available when um, you sign up for my newsletter. It will come this, if you sign up at the link in the description above, you will get not only this applique pattern, which is actually part of this mini banner pattern, um, but you'll get five other patterns for some other fun little projects. Every year, um, for the last couple of years in June, I have done um, what I call the summer sewing series, where each week in the month of June, I offer a free quick little project, something that you can sew in an afternoon or over a little bit of a weekend, um, just to keep you busy or sewing and creative when summer's busy and kids are around and you're outside and in your garden and things like that, but you wanna have a little something, something to kind of whet your sewing appetite. So anyway, this rainbow pattern is a free one um, for my newsletter subscribers. So I made that cute rainbow version in, those are all Lori Holt fabrics, or I made this really cute ombre Valentine rainbow. Um, and these are all using sparkler fabric. It's a basic from Melissa Mortensen for Riley Blake Designs. Uh, so we are gonna get started making our mug rug. 
The other thing that is really great about this project is you can use scraps of batting too. So a lot of times when I'm making, you know, a project and stuff, and then you have, you know, you're cutting off the edge of your extra batting, you can save those pieces and use them. <clears throat> I do recommend using a natural fiber batting, especially if you prefer to work with an iron when you're doing your um, mug rug, where making your quilt as you go background. Um, it's not necessary to use an iron, so I'm going to teach you how I teach it and I'm going to teach you how I do it, <laughs> which isn't always the same thing. Um, it just depends on how precise you like to be. And I'm going to just start this whole thing with a disclaimer. I am not the quilt police. I am not even very particular about things being super square or precise, especially with a project like this. This is meant to just be fun and go to town and have a really good time. It's not meant to be stressful or put a ton of thought into it. It's just kind of a wing it, make it up as you go along kind of a thing. So you can use an iron with it. If you are using an iron, make sure you have a natural fiber batting. If you don't want to use an iron, then you could use leftover, you know, fleece or polyester batting or whatever you want. And um, you just don't want to melt it with your iron if you choose to use your iron. So you'll need your piece of batting and you will need your backing piece. Now, both of these, I totally made up the size of the mug rug that I like. I like a six inch by nine inch mug rug. Um, that's the size of all of these finished ones. You can make yours bigger, you can make it smaller. If you're going to, so you will need to cut your backing piece and your background piece. I typically cut it about an inch bigger than my finished project will be. So if I'm gonna make a six by nine mug rug, I'm gonna cut my pieces seven inches by 10 inches. So it's gonna be seven inches tall and 10 inches wide. Once you have your batting and your backing piece, then you're gonna to want to fuse them or baste them together. I really prefer using spray basting for this. So I do have a, um, like I have a big wall calendar and when I rip those months off, I save those papers so that I can use it to protect my work surface when I'm spray basting. So you can see here, it just acts like a really thin layer of glue. You wanna make sure you get all of the edges. And I like it because it's nice and stuck across the whole surface as opposed to something like um, pin basting or um, even sewing it, but those are both other options you can do. I would much, I would probably really recommend just stitch basting. So just sew them together around the outside if you don't like to do spray basting. Um, that way they stick together pretty well. Um, and it's such a, it's a small enough piece that you're not really gonna run into any problems. So get your backing basted, get your front, and then um, we're gonna get going to sew. So let's switch over to the machine and I'm gonna show you the first couple of steps. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is switch it out. I really like using my walking foot when I'm doing this. And the walking foot helps um, because you're working with already your backing fabric, your batting, and then you're going to be adding layers on top of it. So you want to make sure that you have them all moving at the same time. So the walking foot is really helpful for that. So to do that, I am going to pull not only my foot, but also the stem, see if I can reach around and not right in the middle of the camera. So you're gonna need to pull that screw out and then I'm going to put my walking foot on. Now this little um, U-shaped piece right here is gonna wanna fit onto this screw up here and that's what's going to help everything move and work the way you want. And then there's a little groove on this side where this screw will fit back into the hole here. And then I'm gonna tighten that up with my screwdriver. And then get that thread through my foot. Okay, before I start sewing, if you'll switch back to me, there's a couple of things. <laughs> okay, so I wanted to talk a little bit about fabric choices first. Now, I said before, we totally, this is my favorite thing to do because you can use up scraps and you can use up lots of little scraps if you want. The one thing that you'll want to think about is what you are using your quilted 
um, quilt as you go fabric piece for. So if you are doing um, a mug rug like this, and then you're gonna applique on top of it, you're gonna wanna think about the layers. So in the case of this project that we're doing, I, you know, if I'm gonna put a rainbow on top, I wanna make sure that I'm gonna have contrast between my applique and the fabric that I'm using for the background. So if you're gonna have, you know, a saturated color applique on top, you may want to choose low volume scraps to create your quilt as you go project. Um, if you're gonna do the opposite, so let's see, I have this one right here where you can kind of see that little bit of contrast. This one's a little bit more subtle, but because I did pink for all of my um, background pieces, then I used that darker red so that you could see the applique pieces on top of that. So you're gonna wanna think about what you're gonna put on top of it, if anything. So if you're just like making a zipper pouch or something, or you just have some favorite scraps of fabric from a fabric line maybe that you just really wanna turn into a mug rug, this is a great way to do that. If you're not putting anything on top, go to town, do whatever you want with the fabrics on it. If you are gonna put something on top, you may wanna put a little bit of thought into the fabrics that you choose for the background and the fabric that you're gonna choose for your applique pieces, just to make sure that you have enough contrast and you can see actually what it is that you're making. So um, that was something I wanted to make sure that we chatted about. Um, also, a couple other supplies you may need if you are doing the applique, you will want to have a fusible adhesive and you wanna make sure that you're using a fusible adhesive that you can stitch through. Um, and if you are doing an applique like the one that I have where you're cutting out the centers of letters or things like that, I really recommend a good sharp pair of scissors that cuts all the way to the point. It's gonna make your life cutting out appliques so much easier if you do that. So a good pair of scissors, you're gonna need fusible adhesive. Um, and you can get that at your local craft store. Uh, spray basting is my favorite way to do it. And um, a good pair of scissors. So once we have all of that and I've gathered my scraps, we're gonna head back to the machine and I'm gonna show you how we start our quilt as you go. Okay, so the first thing that I'm gonna do is I have a whole bunch of just random shaped low volume fabrics here. So what I typically do is I will start just with a small piece of, of fabric. So we'll just start with this fabric. And this is where you can, you know, like do you wanna start right in the middle and kind of create, it's going to create kind of like a log cabin style as it comes together. Um, you can just decide where you want that to start. It, I, sometimes I'll start it off to the side and kind of build it from there. Sometimes I'll start it from the middle and build it from there. Um, it's totally up to you. I change it up every time. That's how I have fun with it. <laughs> okay, then the second thing you wanna do is choose a second piece of fabric. Now you have some choices here. We are going to sew two pieces together. So I'm gonna choose this black and white polka dot. Now I can either, it happens to line up like be the exact same height as this piece here. So I could just put these together on this side and sew them together and open it up. I could cut a smaller piece and make it more narrow so that it lines up here with the width of that. But I feel like it's super convenient that it just happens to be the same height as this. So I'm going to place the two pieces right sides together, right on top of my batting. Now I, you know, eyeball it if you want it to be super square and everything lined up perfect, you may want to um, use like a small ruler or something to help you line up those pieces. But I typically just wing it because this is kind of just supposed to be kind of a fun improv type piece. So I'm going to come over to my machine and I am going to use a quarter inch seam allowance, which is a really close to this, this notch here on my walking foot. So I'm just going to use that as my guide. And I am just going to sew a quarter inch seam allowance here. And then when I get to the end, I'm just going to cut that thread. 
And now I have two pieces sewn down together on top of my batting. Now you can do one of two things. If you like your seams to be nice and flat and you can take this and iron it really quick. Um, I have just a little iron right here on the side of my machine. So I've just pressed that really quickly. Um, and then you can add your quilting or you can just fold it over if you want. Then typically what I'll do is I will add quilting to these two pieces before I add on my next piece. But I don't know that I want this piece to go, well, maybe I do, we'll just leave it. All right, so what I'm gonna do, and this is why having a walking foot on here makes all of this really easy because now I can just do some quilting. So I'm just gonna pick a random size of quilting line to put on this piece. I'm gonna come over and I am just um, adding a couple of quilting lines to this little heart piece. I'm gonna trim those threads. And then I'm going to add some quilting to my polka dot piece. Now I typically like to, um, I'm going to start over on this side so that this end of my stitching comes off of this mug rug so that the ends get all tied in. If I started over here, I would want to make sure that I secured my stitches there, either with a back stitch or something. Um, we are going to be adding another piece on top of here. So that will be covered in the quarter inch seam allowance. So you just wanna make sure that the ends of your quilting are either gonna be caught in a seam allowance or go off the edge of your quilted piece to make sure that you're not gonna have any of your threads coming loose once you've finished sewing this and then if you you know, were to wash it or whatever. All right, so we're just gonna add some a couple of quick lines of quilting on this one. And I typically try, let me just get this on real quick. And again, I'm just kind of making this up. Um, there's no real rhyme or reason. I do like to um, have each of my fabric pieces kind of have a different, um, a different style of quilting, whether they're going different directions. Sometimes I'll do a couple of rows, you know, two rows close together and then a bigger space and that kind of thing. Um, but that's, that's, that's totally my preference and you can just do whatever you want. <laughs> this is your project and you get to do it. All right. So now we need to add another piece. So I want to find either a piece that's going to fit this side or a piece that will fit this side. So I have this black and white piece here and because it's going off the edge, I know that it's plenty big. So I'm going to go ahead and sew this one along this edge here. And this is where I show you what I actually really do when I'm doing this, which is I leave my needle in the down position. I will lift up my presser foot here, and then I'm just going to finger press that seam down. And then I am just going to sew that seam just do an edge stitch right there on that seam. And then I can either, um, I'm just gonna add a little bit of diagonal quilting here. So again, I know I'm in my seam allowance here, so that's why I'm fine to just carry those stitches. And then I'm just gonna use the diagonals that are already in this fabric as kind of my guide. And I'm gonna skip every few rows or so, and then just sew up and down that diagonal to add the quilting. And if I'm really um, want it to be precise, I will count, you know, the number of little plus lines here. I'm just kind of going off of feel for when it, you know, my spacing. <laughs> Again, this is just 
all just for fun. So you can make it really as um, sharp as you like, or you can make it a little more casual. It's totally up to you. All right, so now I've got that. And again, I'm coming off of my piece of fabric here, knowing that I'm going to have a seam right there when I put another piece on top. So then I have those three pieces. They're all quilted down into place. And then I'm just going to keep going, building and building until I have all of my batting covered. Um, all right. So we're going to keep going till we get all of that covered. Now I'm going to skip ahead to one that I actually have already filled all the way up. So you can see here, you can switch to the other camera, switch to me. So you can see that each of the um, little shapes and different fabric pieces have all of the quilting going different ways. I usually just use the guides on my walking foot to do that, to space them. Um, and then it will um, just be all nice and quilted. And then on the back, you can see it too. So if you are worried about that quilting showing up, you may want to choose a coordinating, something that will just kind of disappear. I really am just using white thread and it tends to just disappear right away. So once you have all of your um, whole thing covered with your fabric pieces, and again, as you're going, your pieces are gonna get bigger and bigger. So I started with this um, red heart here, and then I added these two pieces and then I kept building in and out. Um, so but your end pieces are gonna be a little bit bigger. So that might be something to kind of keep in mind as you're building your um, quilt as you go. And as you're adding pieces, I usually start with smaller pieces that I already have that scrap small and then work into the bigger pieces that I have. And again, I'm they're all gonna be scraps and stuff like that. So. Um, all right, so then we're gonna get ready to do our applique. So we're gonna trim this down to the size that we're gonna use. So in this case, we're gonna do a nine inch, cut it nine inches by six inches. And so I'm gonna switch over to the other camera and show you, and then we'll get ready to do the applique. Okay, so I'm gonna use just a cutting mat here. And I just had a couple of tips I wanted to share. Let's see if I can scooch this over so we can see it. Okay, what I typically do, because I'm just kind of winging this, I don't necessarily cut everything exactly straight, um, but I do try to use like the seams from the pieces in order to square up this, um, this piece of fabric. So what I will do is I'm just gonna line up a mark on my ruler with that seam and then let's see if we can turn this where we can see it. All right. So you can see where I have my ruler lined up with the seam there. And then I'm going to trim off this wonky edge. I'm going to slide this over. So now I have one straight edge. Then what I'm going to do is use this straight edge and line it up with the lines on my mat on the bottom. And then I will measure the nine inches over and trim it there. So um, that way, and then I will use this straight edge to, again, make this edge straight. So I'm just going to trim it and make sure, like, sometimes you'll have little gaps in your, um, your fabric that you know your batting isn't covered all the way and that's why we cut this so much bigger is to make sure that we could have some play to trim this up sorry it's a little all right trying not to smack my camera too hard um so once you have that edge squared up then uh you'll measure again so we're going to measure the nine inches this way and the six inches that way to trim it or whatever size you're choosing. If you're making a coaster, if you're making, you know, a placemat, um, whatever you're doing, trim it to the size that you want for your project. All right. And then if you want to switch back to the camera on me, let's talk a little bit. Preparing, excuse me, your applique. Um, 
So the pattern for the Bring the Love mug rug, you can find in my Etsy shop. There's a link up above in the um, description for this live. So you can get that pattern there. Um, it comes with the word love and 12 hearts. Um, the rainbow pattern can be found um, by signing up for my newsletter. It's a free pattern that comes with a newsletter subscription. Um, and it's getting added to the chat right now, those links. So if you sign up for my newsletter, it will come. And it's just so that you're not confused. It's actually part of this project, which is a mini banner with the rainbow applique. And then I went ahead and it fits just, let me show you again. Um, if it's just perfect on this size mug rug, it's so cute. And I love this nice, simple rainbow. It makes it really fast to do the applique. So when you're doing the applique, you are going to want to trace or print your applique pattern onto the paper side of your um, adhesive. So I'm trying to show this where you can see it's a little bit shiny. In the, on this one, um, the glue side is rough. So you wanna make sure that you're printing or tracing onto the paper side. So you can purchase sheets um, that go right through your printer, which is my favorite, because then I can skip tracing things. But if you, um, you know, don't have that or you have the rolls or whatever, you can totally trace it too. If you are making up your own pattern and it's something with letters or something with the direction, you need to remember that you need to mirror that image to make sure that once it's turned into applique, it's going to read the right direction. So on the pattern for that you get, you know, with my mug rug pattern, for example, the letters are already reversed for you so that you can just trace them straight off the way the pattern comes. But if you are, you know, printing off something and then you want to turn that into applique, make sure that you either mirror the image or you can just like flip your paper over if you've printed it off and then trace it from the back side. And that will give you the same result. All right, we have our pattern pieces onto our paper side of our fusible adhesive. And then um, you're gonna cut out your pieces for each um, individual item, depending on the fabric you wanna put it on. So in this case, these two hearts, I both wanted out of this pink heart fabric. So I cut them out together, but you wanna leave a little bit of a margin around them on your paper. So. Again, I'm going to be cutting them, so we're going to pretend like this little group of four hearts. So I'm going to cut it out. I'm going to leave just a little margin of the adhesive around the edges, and that does two things. One, it's so much easier to cut out right on the line instead of right next to the line, and you don't want to have to cut really precise twice if you don't have to. <laughs> so that's the first thing, and then the second thing it does is it makes sure that you get glue all the way to the edges of your applique pieces so that it's going to be nice and stuck to your project and you don't have to worry as much about edges lifting and things like that. So make sure you leave a little margin around, then you're gonna follow the manufacturer's instructions for whatever type of fusible adhesive that you're using, and then you're gonna fuse it to the wrong side of whatever fabric you're gonna use for the applique. So make sure that you're following those directions. Um, and a lot of times that I have found, um, particularly with the brands that I have used, which I haven't used all of them, but a lot of them, you want to let it cool before you go to cut it out and try to peel off the backing. So once it's cool, then you're gonna take your good pair of scissors and cut out all of the pieces. Um, and then they're gonna look like this. So here's some of my letters that spell out love. They still have paper on the side. I don't know if you can see the little outline that I cut out. And then you're going to take those and um, we're going to put them onto our project. But before I do that, I just wanted to show really quick. So this was another scrap of fabric. I, it's actually a scrap from the rainbow that I made. And I decided that what I wanted to do was I just used a scrap of my adhesive that I had. I fused it to the back of this one. And then I'm just going to make my own heart. So I'm just going to fold that in half. And I'm just going to take my scissors and cut out a heart like you would, you know, in elementary school just using that seam and I'm just going to give it a nice round side right there and a point at the bottom and then I have a cute little heart so then you know if you don't have applique pieces you don't want to go and find one or google one you can totally just cut out whatever shapes you want you could use um fussy cutting from different fabrics if 
you have a print that you really like and it has a feature or whatever that you like, you could totally just add the adhesive to the back and then use the fabric itself as your pattern outline to create that applique piece too. But I thought that I, just one big heart would be a really cute, you know, you just add the heart just in the bottom corner there, you know, and that would just be a really fun, simple, um, really fast mug rug. So, all right. So once we have all of our pattern pieces cut out, then you are going to peel away the paper backing. And if you have found that your glue, so see if I'm going to see if I can show you. It should be shiny on the back of your fabric where, see if we can pick up shine. There we go. Um, it shows that the adhesive is stuck. Now, if you find that the adhesive is not sticking to your fabric and it's staying stuck to your paper, take it back to your iron, hit it with some heat for a couple of seconds, let it cool all the way, and then try again. And the glue should stick to the fabric. Another thing that I have found helpful if you have a quilter's clapper or just a book or sometimes I even just use my acrylic rulers I will take and after I've pressed them then I will set that on top to just so that it's got some really good contact while it's cooling to make sure that that adhesive is really sticking well to your fabric so that's another tip if you're finding that you're running into problems another thing that can create issues is if you have a fabric with a lot of sizing on it so if it feels really stiff sometimes that sizing can interfere with your adhesive sticking to your fabric so if you do have one that has feels like it has a lot of sizing, you may want to pre-wash it before you add the applique to it. So that's just another troubleshooting tip if you find that you're running into problems. But all right, we're going to peel off the backing of all of our pieces. And then we are going to um, move over to the other camera really quick. And I'm going to show you how I line up my uh, applique. OK, so. Let me see if I can, I'm going to slide this over here, even though it's underneath my, I wouldn't normally <laughs> line these up while they're underneath my machine here, but in order to get the camera, all right, so I have my L peeled, let me peel off this O really quick, and we'll just start with these two pieces. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to use that as my guide for um, lining this up. So I'm gonna make sure that I'm using the markings on my acrylic ruler to kind of give me a level um, row, you know, or a, a level basically, in order to line up these letters. There's a couple of things that you wanna think about when you're going to add the applique. And that is, the first is that you're gonna end up adding binding to this. So you wanna make sure that you're accounting for whatever width of binding you like to add. When I sew my binding down, I typically use a quarter inch seam allowance. So I'm going to at least have a quarter of an inch, but then I like to give myself another, oh, half inch of buffer. So, so I'm going to make sure that I'm at least three quarters of an inch away from the edges. And then I will also use just kind of a, make sure that this edge here is also lined up with a marking on my ruler so that I can make sure, especially if I'm trying to center something like when, um, all of the hearts, like on this one, where I, you have rows that you're trying to keep lined up and kind of evenly spaced. So make sure that you're lining up the edges as well to make sure that you have everything, you know, as even and lined up as you can. So then all I'm going to do is just, I'm going to put this about an inch in from the side and I'm just going to line up that bottom there and place that first one. And then I will come and add my O here. Now you, I'm doing this on my sewing machine. You are gonna want to do this on your pressing surface <laughs> to make sure that you don't have to move them between placing and pressing. So you'll go to your pressing surface, wherever that is, your ironing board or whatever, and then you will line these all up. Then you're gonna hit them with your iron. Again, you wanna follow the manufacturer's instructions typically when you're fusing your adhesive um, to the fabric the first time, you use a little, your a little less time um, than your second one where you're actually fusing the fabric to the fabric. So you want to make sure that you're paying attention to those directions and that you're giving it as much heat, um, and also watching your iron setting so you're not scorching your fabric or anything like that. If you're concerned about the adhesive kind of 
getting onto your iron or sliding out from underneath your fabric, which I've never really had a problem with it. But if it makes you more comfortable, you could use parchment paper or a silicone pressing mat or something, set that on top of your applique and then press it just to make sure that you're protecting both your iron and your um, fabric and things like that. So again, follow the manufacturer's instructions for placing those and fusing them into place. Let them cool. And then we are going to sew around. So I'm going to set that one aside. And I have another one here that is already all fused into place. And we are just going to sew around these. Now, I like to use a straight stitch um, to do this. That's just my preference. Uh, if it's something that's going to be washed a lot, a lot, I would recommend using a very narrow, short zigzag stitch if your machine has one. Um, it will kind of seal that edge a little bit more. Um, I don't really like the look of a satin stitch, but you could totally do that too. But I just really like the look of um, just the narrow or just a regular straight stitch. But if I if it's something that I know is going to get washed more, um, then I will go ahead and do th that narrow zigzag. You might also want to think about what kind of thread you're using. Um, let me grab these samples really quick. So I typically just use white just because that's what's in my machine most of the time. However, you can do like I've done on this one where I used a really dark contrasting black thread um, because I wanted it to have more of a sketched look. And I actually sewed these down using um, my free motion foot, just my open toe embroidery foot to do it that way. Um, and I kind of like how it looks a little bit sketched. They're not right on top of each other. I did do two rows around it because I, I did want it to have a little bit more of a standout look to it. Um, or you can kind of have the stitching disappear. Like in this case, I used white. And even though this is red, you don't really notice that stitching very much. Um, it doesn't stand out a ton. So. You, if you want your stitching to stand out, you may want to thread your machine with a really contrasting thread. And if you want your stitching to disappear, um, either use like whatever neutral that you typically use, or you can do um, whatever, you know, something that coordinates with the applique colors. So when I go to sew this down, um, typically what I'll do is just make sure that on my machine, I have it using the needle down position. And then one quick trick that I have learned is visually people tend to read, well, most people tend to read from the top, uh, the top left to the bottom right. That's how we read books. That's how we look at things. So your brain doesn't pay a lot of attention to the bottom left corner. So that's typically where I start my stitching when I am sewing around my applique. Just it's the least conspicuous spot. Um, but if there's a better, you know, like the way you're sewing it and stuff, if there's a, a place that makes more sense, then start there. So I'm just going to start stitching around this. And I just use a regular stitch length. I've left my walking foot on here just because we're still sewing through all of these layers. But you could use your regular foot if you want. And the thing that I love so much about these machines is when you use the needle down position, it raises this presser foot just a little bit to let you pivot your fabric and make that turn so that they're nice and sharp and you can just work your way, get that thread out of my way, all the way around. And then when I get back to where I started, I'm just going to do a couple of quick back stitches. You could also use your fixed stitch on your machine. And then I will just cut that thread. And then I will move on to the next letter. So I'm just going to show you a couple of things. When you're doing round shapes like this, do a couple of stitches, stop, pivot, and then keep going. You're going to get a much rounder, you know, smoother curve if you do that than if you try to just, you know, kind of wing it as it's going. It gets, for me anyway, gets out of control really fast. <laughs> so if you've got, if you've got a round curve that you're stitching around, take a couple of stitches, let it stop, 
pivot, do a couple more stitches and work your way around. Sometimes it starts to feel a little tedious, but that's why the automatic lifting of the presser foot becomes magical because then this gets done a lot faster. All right, so then you will just repeat that for all the rest of your letters, including the insides of those letters. I like, I'll go back and trim off all of my threads and all of that stuff. And then it, all that's left to do is add your binding. Uh, if you wanna switch back to the other camera. Um, okay, somebody asked if I've ever used a blanket stitch and totally lots of people like to use the blanket stitch too. The only thing that I find when I'm trying to do the blanket stitch is I have to think about where my needle is stopping, <laughs> especially when I'm going around curved shapes and things like that to make sure that it's stopped at the outside so that I can pivot and that blanket stitch is going to continue going around. But a blanket stitch is a perfect um, stitch to use. You could also use um, like decorative stitches and things like that as kind of a really fun look to it. Um, and then you can just go like right on the outside edge of the applique, you know, so that it kind of goes around the edge of the applique as opposed to a blanket stitch or a zigzag stitch, but then it would kind of have the same look of sealing that edge a little bit more. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, if you are not um, super familiar with binding or it's not your favorite thing, I do have a whole playlist of how I do binding, especially on small projects like this on my YouTube channel. Um, it's just at a Maruni designs, same as everywhere else. And um, you can find that there. Are there any other questions or does anybody have any other asks for me um, that I can help you with? <clears throat> when I am doing the binding on these, I do machine bind front and back. It's just so much faster, but if you're hand binding it, then it's super easy because it's small. <coughs> Sorry, I'm gonna just grab a drink really quick and make sure that there's not any other questions. So again, the links to the patterns, including the free rainbow pattern and my um, Bring the Love mug rug pattern, which includes both the, um, the love applique as well as the hearts. Um, can be found in my Etsy shop. The links to all of those will be in the description of this live. They're also in the chat. Um, they were shared earlier. I have had so much fun being here with you today. I love sewing and I love creating seasonal projects. Um, okay, somebody asked which stitch length I use and I just use the regular um, two and a half that is automatic on my machine. When I am doing the quilting, um, like sewing them down, doing the quilt as you go part of it. Sometimes I will increase the stitch length to a three, but typically with this project, I don't just because sometimes those seams are a little short. So I just want to make sure that there's plenty of stitches. When I am doing regular quilting, like if the project's finished and I'm doing straight line quilting with my walking foot, then I will increase the stitch length to that. So, um, Thank you. Someone said they're finding my directions easy to follow. I appreciate that so much. So I do have a blog post on my blog. Again, it's a Maroonie Designs. Um, somebody is asking the finished size. These mug rugs are six inches high by nine inches wide. It's a size I just made up. <laughs> I just like the size of it. Um, it fits a drink and a little cookie or whatever nicely. Um, if I use them as candle mats on my desk or um, you know, it's nice to corral drips and things like that. So I, I find it a good size. The other benefit of mug rugs like this is they're super easy to mail. Um, they just slide right inside an envelope and they're super cheap. So it's a great gift to send to a quilty friend or somebody far away that you want to just send a little bit of homemade love to. Um, that's a great option for that too. Uh, and sewing seasonal, like little adding things that don't take a ton of time, but are just a fun little addition to your decor is kind of my jam and the thing that I love to do the most. So I hope you'll follow me over on um, 
Amarini Designs and I'm on Instagram. I have a blog and I have a YouTube channel. Um, let's see, can you do a quilt as you go quilt block that have been embroidered? Um, yes, you could. The thing that's tricky about the quilt as you go is you are um, doing the whole thing. I'm trying to think how to, let me show you this project really quick. Okay, so this is a project that I embroidered using a pattern from my friend, um, Bev McCullough, her book. So I did this embroidery and then I wanted to add it to, I wanted to make it kind of quilted. So I added the border to it, but then the trick is that you're trying to, I wanted to add some quilting, but I didn't want to necessarily sew through my embroidery, if that makes sense. So that is where the trick would come in as far as using embroidered pieces into a quilt as you go. Um, you totally could. And what I would do probably is either just quilt around the embroidered part of it, or I would um, just not quilt that section that is part of that quilt as you go thing. Um, okay, somebody's asking how wide my binding is. I usually do a two and a half or two and a quarter inch binding. Typically I do two and a half if it's like a quilt or something like that. But I find on the mug rugs because I'm doing the machine um, binding that when I do two and a half, which is what I did with these, I end up with a little bit more binding on the back than I really like. So I typically, when I'm doing a mug rug, will do two and a quarter inches. But the caveat to that is it does make it a little trickier to make sure that you're catching that on the backside and that you're not missing any of that binding. So um, if you are doing the more narrow binding, I would use um, some glue and glue baste that down onto the backside before you sew it down if that's the method that you like. If you're hand stitching, I would totally go two and a quarter because I kind of like a narrower binding on a small project like this. When I sew it to the front, I do use a quarter inch seam allowance. So it's just a little over a quarter inch on the front. By the time you fold it around to the back, you know, there's a little bit of play there. And so it looks a little wider than a quarter of an inch, but that's the seam allowance that I use as I sew the binding to the front of my project, if that makes sense. Um, all right, this has been so great. I'm so thankful to Husqvarna Viking for having me today. Um, if you have any questions, I will try to come back and check the comments. Feel free to send me um, a message on Instagram. Again, I'm A. Marooney Designs there as well. And um, I would love to see your projects. If you make them, tag me both here on Facebook and on Instagram. I'd love to see what you're making and sewing. Um, super impressed with everybody and the work that people make, people are so creative and it's always so fun to see what people are making. So, all right, well, I am going to sign out. I hope you have a wonderful day and are enjoying this first day of February and you're ready to spread the love. All right, we'll see you later.